in one of my recent videos on, I think it was a Spanish ring knot, I talked about the three-part five-byte turd's head and how it can be raised or how it can be expanded into a three-part eight-byte turd's head or a three-part eleven-byte turd's head. <laughs> and I kind of want to expound on that particular concept that uh, one of the regular things people who aren't real experienced with knot tying ask me about knots like this is how I can possibly remember how to tie them. And the short answer is I don't really remember how to tie them. I remember how to tie the base knot, the skeleton, and then add on to it and make it bigger. Um, the three-part five-byte turk set is not actually the base knot. Um, it is one that the cycles in it is what I think of it as, whereas the uh, strand as it wraps around it goes to the top of the knot and then back to the bottom I consider that to be a cycle and this one does two cycles as it wraps around the mandrel for the three part five by Turk's head there's a way of tying a knot that's three parts that only has that one cycle and it's not really called a Turk's head but it's sort of the basis of this knot and a bunch of others and from there you can build on to it you can either expand it this way by adding a bunch more bites to it or you can expand it by adding parts and bites to it because you'll add, um, depending on how many cycles you have, for every two parts you add to it, you're going to add another two bites for a single cycle, four bites for double cycles, and so on and so forth. Now, cycles, I don't know if that's an actual term, but that's the way I think of it because it's like, you know, waves and electromagnetic waves. Uh, but anyway, back into this. We're going to pull this one off. And the reason this is important is for larger knots like these. These are all basically tied the same sort of way. You just kind of repeat the process. This is a two byte Turk head that's been wrapped multiple times to start to make a knot of any length. This is actually the same basis for these knots which are four byte turk heads. And they just have more parts because they've been wrapped around more times to start with. So our very, very basic beginning knot on this, we could call a two byte turk head. Even though, like I said, it's so simple, it's not even considered a turk head. And it's just basically wrap around, you cross over itself to make an X, and when you come back, on the bottom side of the knot, you go over that strand that came back and crossed, and you go under the strand that was your standing in. And then when you come down and cross over this strand, you're back where you started, and you basically have on each side two bites on the top and the bottom. And three parts. So this is really a, the basic skeleton of the knot. Now from this point you could take and swap these pieces with each other and run through it and you're gonna make three part five byte turks head. Or you can leave it just the way it is, wrap it around to your beginning. And you can start raising this knot to a five part knot that's gonna have four bytes. And let me show you basically how that's done. The rules are gonna be the same as we continue on. Uh, we're gonna start with following right next to our standing end. So that one we started with. And we're gonna do the exact same thing it's doing up through this knot, which pretty simple. It just goes under that one, over this one. Now you notice you're not locking anything in right now. Then when we get to the top here, the same strand that was our standing in, we're gonna cross over it. And we're gonna continue going down the knot, cross over top of it there. This is our, end, our strand we're following. And we're gonna still follow right next to it, under this strand, over the bottom strand. Now at this point, the knob is kind of wobbly and loose, but this is where we're going to go around and lock it all into place. 
So we're going to do the same thing basically again. We're going to follow at this, start at the standing end, follow next to it, only this time instead of doing exactly what it does, we're going to do the opposite of what it does. So it goes under this strand, so we're going to go over it. And we're going to go under this strand that it goes over. We get to the top here, we're still following next to this strand. And this time when we cross it, instead of going over the top of it to go back down, we're going to go underneath of it. And the way I think of it is I'm always staying behind that strand that I'm following. So as it wraps around, every time I cross it, what I'm doing is I'm staying on this back side of it. I don't ever wind, want to wind up out in front of it. Straighten out that twist I've been getting. Now again, we're following this strand that we just crossed under up here. We're doing the opposite of what it does. So we're going to go over this strand, under that strand, over this strand. And we are back down to the bottom of our knot where we started. And this is the five part four byte Turk set. Like I said, I just kind of expanded that. I raised that knot from a three part two byte to a five part four byte. Now where this becomes important is that, as I mentioned, this one handle is a two byte Turk set of any length. Just wrap around several times. You can continue tying and expand it and just keep going around like that. And you can turn it into a four byte Turk set of any length. You can also continue the same process. If you got plenty of room, you can go around again. Just the same as what we just did. We'll go through and we'll make the same as what that standing in is doing. See if I've got enough room to do this on this one. We get to the top, we're going to cross over it and follow along doing the same thing it's been doing. Staying behind that strand that we're following, which is our first our very first wrap around the mandrel, our very first wrap when we were making this knot is what I'm following each time. So the rules don't change. Just doing the exact same thing I did the last two times around the, the mandrel. That's one time around. So the second time around, I do the opposite. And we're gonna weave through Basically, any strand that's underneath, we're going to go under it. Any strand that's on top, we're going to go over it. The only real tricky part with this is keeping everything completely straight so that these ones that are tucked underneath don't slide up underneath the knot. And you don't lose them in all the other strands. This is about as tight as this one's going to go. all wrapped around. And now what I have is I've raised that five part four byte turd head 
into a seven part six byte turk set. Yes, six bytes. So every time I go around these single cycle knots, it's just going to keep getting more complex. More bytes, more parts, two more of each of them. It's going to every time, two times you wrap around. So that's raising a turk set. And so these, this is a, another seven part, six byte turk set. It's just larger. It's easier to see. And so you can continue doing this. Uh, you can go through and add on two parts, two bytes, and it becomes nine part, eight byte. Just keeps going. Now, anytime you have an odd number of bytes, or odd, odd number of parts, it's possible to then start weaving in another knot that's got the same number of bytes, but uh, two less parts. But so basically, and that's what's referred to as a pineapple knot. That's going to be a whole nother video is how to turn a seven part, six byte Turk head like this. Basically what we just tied here into a pineapple knot with another knot woven through it. Now, these knots, like I said, if you just make your base knot bigger, you can keep adding on to it and just until you fill up the space make it tighter and tighter more bites more parts and it just keeps growing uh if and now we have our three part four our three part five byte turk set so like i said let's go ahead and expand that the same way that i expanded i don't even know where it went this little guy doing the same thing Not what I wanted at all. We're going to follow right next to our standing in strand. And these can technically be tied just on your hand without using a mandrel like this. It's a lot easier to use the mandrel to keep everything straight and flat and smooth to start with. Um, it's easier to stretch everything out and get the room that you need and so on and so forth uh, without having to try and keep track of everything. All right. So now, like I said, we're following this strand. We get up to the top here. We're going to cross over that strand and we're going to stay behind it. We don't want to wind up out in front of it. So we stay behind it doing the same thing it does. Try and make sure that these strands don't wind up sliding in underneath. That's where things get really messed up on these knots. We're still following this strand. Go down here. We're going to cross again over top of it and follow right next to it. So you see there's really, it's very simple process there's not a lot to remember you don't really have to memorize how to build these knots as long as you remember to follow that strand around and like i said remember i gotta go over it that's important the first time around and under it the second time around and each time i go around after i cross it keep everything straight until we get back to the beginning. And back at the beginning. Now we're going to follow next to that. We'll start again next to that standing in. I'm not following the strand I've been following. I go back to following the standing in. Only this time doing the opposite of what the standing in does. Basically it's the same way you tie the five part four byte. I've just got more bytes to start with. When I went from the three part to the five part. Be 
careful not to lose, like I said, strands underneath. And pay attention to which one I'm following. So again, we're following our standing end. It goes up, it goes back down. I'm staying behind it in the knot and doing the opposite of what it did because I'm on my second cycle, my second wrap around. Now here's one of those strands that slipped that I was talking about. That you gotta watch out for. That that strand wanted to slide up under there. So this is the strand we've been following and that's the one that slipped up under there. The second time around we need to go under it rather than over it. Again, we're following that strand and just doing the opposite of what it does. If it goes over a strand, we go under that strand. All right, here again, it wants to slip in. And once again, that's the strand we've been following that we're crossing under. some dressing on this knot. Okay, we're watching. This is the strand we've been following. It should be the last one that crosses over your standing in there. Um, till we get back down to our standing in, like I said, we're just going to keep doing the same thing. So there's more steps going around this way, but it's the exact same steps. Um, we just had more bites to start with so we've got more times we have to go over and under stuff as we wrap around but then what we have here if I get it all tightened up and smoothed out a little bit is a five part so one two three four five strands wrap around and in this case, a nine byte knot. So we went from three part five byte to five part nine byte knot. It just, it wraps around more times basically. Yep, nine bytes. So everything's the way it should be. And as usual with Turk says, they make a ring that holds up on their own. You don't necessarily need to keep it on that mandrel once you've got it done. You can actually tie these on a mandrel like that, a little loose, put them on whatever project you're planning on putting them on, and then sit there with the fid and tighten them up until they fit tight down around what you're trying to set them on. You got to tie them about the right size to start with. but. It is one way to make it a little bit easier. Um, I usually tie them directly on the project I'm working on. So where does that leave us on things like handles? Like I've got on my mallet handles here. Well, like I said, if you learn how to tie a two part knot of any length, it's just a matter of you keep tying it and you go around just like this to raise it again to a four part knot, or a four byte knot, sorry. A four byte, two byte knot of any length and raise it to a four byte knot. So a two byte knot, like I said, in its basic form, wrap around, wrap around, tuck it under there. That's a two byte knot. If we want to expand that to um, any length, instead of wrapping it back around like that, all we really have to do, we start by wrapping it around and we just keep going up. And if you know about how many times you're going to go around this, you can sort of figure out what your spacing needs to be. If you're just going to go around and make it a two byte knot of any length, you just leave about the width of the lace between them. 
if you're going to make it bigger, you leave more space between them. Uh, so about three times the width of the lace. Yeah, that should be right. Should come out with um, letting you go around two more times and be your uh, four byte knot. You want to spread it out, you can go around him a bunch more times and it can be a six byte knot or an eight byte knot. Just depends on how many times you want to go around, what your lace is, how thick your core is, what you think you can get away with. Uh, so yeah, we're going to spray this out just a little bit. Give ourselves a, a little bit of extra room. So we can tie a nice loose two bite knot. Now I wrap around about two and then we go to the back. So about two and a half times. So once, twice, into the back. Then I come across around the front and I make an X. And I'll make an X on the back side of that one. And I'll come around again, I'll make an X around this one. And then an X around that on the back. So I basically have two X's on the front, two X's on the back, this loop up here. And then we're back down to our very beginning. Now we're gonna stay. We're gonna wrap around, make that final X there. And we're made, now we've got one of our bites at the bottom, this bite, we got one of our bites at the top. And all we've done is just wrap around a few times. Now we're gonna go up, and we're basically gonna cross each of these strands that I just came down and wrap our way back up and we're making X's on the sides until we get to the top. And then we'll start weaving it through. And I didn't quite get enough lace to do this long of a knot. But we'll start weaving it through by going over this last one, under that one. And you can see this was the strand I just wrapped around. I'm going to go over it, under this one, and wrap our way back down. Let's go ahead and make this knot just a bit smaller. I could get a bigger piece of lace. Uh, I could have measured the lace to start with. I should have figured I didn't have enough for that. And there is a way to measure it. Um, to measure it, you can actually just wrap around real tight whatever distance you want to go. Let's say I want to cover four inches of this handle with this lace. I will wrap around four inches of that handle and cover it, just wrapping it like this. I don't have enough to do this one because I need about twice what it takes to wrap around to cover that area. So this is about three inches, almost four, getting close to four inches, three and a half. Um, and that's only about half the lace, so I can only cover about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of this handle with this piece of lace. I usually just guess. I just, oh, that's probably enough. All right, so we're just gonna wrap around one time and a half, then two times and a half, come back down. Come back up, back to the top where we start, um, right where I was when I untied that knot. Under that strand, over the strand, under that strand. Again, I'm just technically following this strand here and doing the opposite of what I just did with it. So when you lock it in, you're just going to follow a strand and do the opposite of it. I should probably say I'm, I actually am technically following this strand that I went under. That's probably a, a better one to be following because then it will be consistent. But I'm doing the opposite of what I did. So it goes under that strand. I'm going to go over that strand, of course. Same way on this side. This one goes under that strand over it. So when you're locking it in, it doesn't much matter. 
but it does help to remember which strand you're following. And then we get back down to our beginning point and we're right next to our standing end. Now this is tied loosely and a little messily right now, but it can be straightened up. But essentially what I have here is the aforementioned, once I tuck this in, I've got two bytes at the bottom, I've got two bytes at the top. One, two. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts. So seven parts, two bytes. If I decided to wrap around just like before, raising this knot, I would add uh, two more bytes to it. And I would add, um, now that it's been wrapped around several times, um, let's see, one, two, I'll add six more bytes to it, or six more parts to it. So again, a whole bunch more parts, less bytes. Um, so if I continued this, which I don't have the lace to do, but let's talk about that a little bit. What if you don't have the lace? What if you get to a point where I just didn't take it a big enough piece of lace? And you got another piece here, that scrap left over from something else. On another knot you tied. It is possible to add onto a piece of lace. It's not the best option. You really should get a big enough piece to start with. But it's possible to take that lace Skive it over a bit of a distance. Skive this one over a similar distance. Down to nothing. And then glue these together. And it's referred to as glue splicing, splicing a piece of lace. Of course, it's also possible to take that end and just tuck it under the knot and start another one on top of it, tucked under the knot, and do a friction splice. But on most knots, that's going to leave a lump that you don't want. I'm just going to go ahead and use glue called Leather Weld here because it's nice and flexible. Contact cement would be quicker. But since I'm making a video, y'all don't need to wait for it. Just me. So this glue works really well. Kind of like contact cement if you let it sit and dry part of the way and then put it together. But then you have to clamp it and let it dry all the way. But you can see our lace there glued together, spliced together. You can see the line of glue right now, but it'll dry clear without a lump or anything in it. And I will just take a little spring clamp like this, clamp it and let it dry. All right, it's been uh, five, 10 minutes, not long. Um, and this glue is Pretty much dried. It's probably not its full strength until it's had a chance to sit for like a day or so, but it's good enough for now. Um, and we can continue tying our knot from here. So as I said, right now I've got a two-part turf set that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this is going to be number seven um, parts. Two by seven part, and we're going to raise it just like before. I might want to loosen it up just a touch here. There we go. 
Even it out, loosen it up. We're gonna take our, our newly expanded piece of lace here and we're gonna follow right next to that standing end. And we're just gonna, like before on all the other knots, we'll just follow the strand doing the same thing it does. Be a little careful of our glue splice there that we don't pull too hard on it right yet. And this is the strand I've been following right here at the top. So just like before, we're gonna get to the top and we're gonna cross over that strand and come down behind it. And again, we're still following next to it, still doing exactly what it's doing. Hopefully I didn't get confused about which strand I'm following. But basically I'm creating pairs of strands like this that are running next to each other that you're gonna keep seeing and thinking, oh, that doesn't look right. As you get back down to the bottom, you should be next to the last strand that crosses over, or actually that first strand that crossed over, are standing in. So we're right where we need to be. Now we're gonna to need to make some room there because we're gonna to need to go next to that standing end again. And this time after we cross over that last strand, we're gonna do the opposite of what the standing end did. So again, standing ends under this strand, we're gonna go over this strand, we're gonna under that strand, so on and so forth. And we're gonna follow right next to that, again, doing the opposite. So just like raising all the other knots, follow around once, doing the same thing as the standing end, follow around again, doing the opposite of what the standing end did. And you'll notice that I'm going over these two strands like this. What I'm doing when I go over a pair like that, there's two strands underneath of it. And I'm setting up to where next time around, I'll go under this, over this, under this, and lock it all in. But on the way up, it's not gonna look right. But just follow what you're supposed to be doing. Just follow that strand that I'm right behind. Do the opposite of whatever it does. So it goes under those two, I go over those two. It goes over this one, I go under that one. I think it goes over to under one. Then that strand I'm following is underneath this. That looks like our glue splice right there. Um, so we're going to lock that down. And then we're going to go pull that out. We're going to cross underneath that strand we've been following. So again, just like when I was raising these other knots, go up, you stay behind it, you cross over it, following exactly with it. Then you go around again, you stay behind it. When you cross, you cross under it. You're doing the exact opposite of what it was doing. So let's just reverse the second step from the first. Things tightening up. Use 
if I had to make some room here. Now remember I'm following this strand that becomes that first strand crossing the standing in down here. So we're just going to follow next to it. I just moved everything out of the way a little bit to give myself a little bit more uh, room and a little bit more visually where I can see what I'm doing. So again, following that strand, doing the opposite of what that strand does, just like we've been doing. And this should be our last time around to make it a four part knot or a four bite knot. squishing and twisting and so on and so forth and you can take and roll it roll it under your foot on a floor or roll it on a marble slab with a chunk of wood whatever to smooth it out and even it up but that's what we were going for and what we now have is a 13 part knot so 13 part, 4 byte, not raised from, it was a 7 part, 2 byte knot, I believe. You all just watched the video, you can probably remember more than I can. Uh, anyway, so that's all about raising knots and how I use them to make handles. There was a bit about glue splicing, which is always useful. Um, and right now you cannot hardly tell where that glue splice was. It's right here. If I tightened everything around just right, I could probably even hide that just to be sure it was underneath something. But as is, it's kind of pinched in there and held in. It might come loose over time. It's best to use a solid piece of lace. But it's always possible to splice something together. I need to add to that, that you can just build knots from other knots and just keep building bigger and bigger. Just remember that first starting technically three byte or three part two byte knot and how you can wrap more times to make it more parts. And from there, it's really simple rules.